You guys are talking to, this is Gary Dubiel of uh, Sex Fever Guide Service based out of the Noose River. Gary, I have heard, and I believe another podcast, and you were talking about color. And a lot of people put a lot of emphasis, and in my opinion, a little bit too much emphasis, on color and their lures. What mm-hmm. is your opinion about that relating to speckled trout? The best color you'll ever use for speckled trout is the one you believe is going to catch the most fish because you're going to fish it longer and with more confidence. As a general rule of thumb, in any any off-color water or any color that has turbulence, any color that's got tannins in it, any water that has some sort of coloration to it, bright baits are easier for that fish to see, therefore they're going to eat that bait. Right. In, say, for example, on a, on a typical Noose River fishing day and I'm fishing in tannic water, um, a white bait and a chartreuse bait and a pink bait have very little variation in the white that it looks like to the fish underneath the water. Right. And so they all are what they are. If you're fishing areas where the water's very clear, sometimes toning down that color, making that color a little bit more natural, in my opinion, can be a little bit more productive, but I've seen, I've seen just about any color work in any situation. So um, color to me is not is not a, a particular uh, reason to or to not catch fish. The one thing that I've seen and I, and I find uh, interesting is you'll find anglers who will put a color of bait on and fish it for 10 minutes and change, continue to change that color right. until they catch a fish. Right. They're not sitting on the same spot. And so as they move down a bank in our area and they run into a school of fish, they catch the fish on that color. Well, that's the color of the day. Right. Well, that's the color you had on when you caught a fish. Right. Uh, and the other thing you can see is you say, well, hey, look at that guy. Look at Gary standing over there, and he's using this bait and this color, and he's catching lots of fish, and I can't catch those fish. Right. Well, that may not have anything to do with the with the bait because I may be fishing that bait completely different than you are. Right. Uh, or I may have better equipment, and I've been fishing for spell trout for 40 years, and I felt the bite and I caught the fish and you you haven't done that. So there yeah. oftentimes are reasons why people catch fish on a particular color bait. It usually has nothing to do with the color. Absolutely. Gary, I'm going to run through a series of very quick questions about lures. And I want to just run through and I want to hear your just, you know, initial you know response as I kind of run through these questions. That I know these are questions that I'm interested to hear your opinion and I know a lot of people are thinking about. So when talking about lures, what's your opinion of scent? Um, not not necessary. Yes, not necessary. Okay. Uh, so you're not, you know, really juicing all your baits up with Procure and and, no, and all that? N- they, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Uh, so a speckle trout are, are sight feeders. They're, they're right. going to feed by sight and vibration right. uh, or noise over right. over scent. They, it, when a fish approaches a bait, he doesn't stop to examine the bait by smelling the bait. <laughs> Therefore, exactly. scent does nothing for you. Exactly. Okay, next question. And this one, you get a lot of different polar opposite opinions about the size of the lure. People say, you want to catch a big gator trout, you have to throw a giant lure. What is your opinion about that? When the water is warm uh, and, you're, and you really don't feel like catching anything, uh, you can put a big bait on Right, speckled trout. Uh, speckled trout will feed on. Is a general rule of thumb on anything from 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 two to five inches long. Right. Speckled trout are 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 as a drum. They are a suction feeder, so they're sucking bait in their mouth. Right. And and so if you are targeting a larger fish and you're fishing a three and a half or a four inch bait, which right. still catch a smaller fish as well. But if you're right. fishing that style of bait. That bait's going to go in that fish's a big fish's mouth very easily. When a speckled trout's hooked in the roof of the mouth, there is no soft mouth. He'll never come off. Absolutely. All right. And the other thing that I'll say about about bait size, in the winter time when the water temperature gets cold, it's actually physically easier for a for a uh, any fish to digest a smaller bait. So they digest it and get more calories from a small bait over a large bait when the metabolism slows down. Therefore, if you're fishing in, in cold water, if you're speckled trout fishing in the low 50s or high 40s, if you drop your bait down to 3 inches 
two and a half inches or two inches, you're just as likely to catch a large fish because right. they're more than likely going to target more s- small prey. Right. Small bait works just fine. Absolutely. Very quickly, I would love to ask your input on winter, your favorite bait, spring, your favorite lure, summer, and fall, if you have, if those vary at all for you. So as a, as a guide, you want everybody to be very productive right. um, fishing. Right. And the difficulty I find with speckled trout is that speckled trout do not drive through a bait. Therefore, the bite's not really hard. And so you can make many mistakes fishing a variety of baits. Right. Popping corks eliminate those mistakes. They also right. track fish by noise. Right. And you can vary the baits underneath them in size a little bit and fall rate. And so... Uh, in the wintertime, I have a tendency to fish a composite shrimp like a storm wild eye shrimp over a jig head. In the summertime, mm-hmm. I'll use a jig head. I may go from a pencil cork in the cooler, uh, pencil style um, uh, popping cork in the cooler months to an oval cork that makes more noise in the summer. That is that is my go-to when I'm when I'm guiding. The variations in that are that I I use lead heads and soft plastics. Uh, when I need to, when the fish are not very aggressive, right. when the water's really, really cold, or I'm fishing a little bit deeper water in the wintertime. Uh, and in the warmer weather, I'm going to fish topwater baits, particularly at low light, just for the mere fact that you're going to you're going to have that opportunity uh, to watch a trout come up and eat a topwater bait. Absolutely. That's excellent information. Uh, some of the last things I wanted to ask your opinion on is, you know, I, I've heard also a lot of opinions about water quality and how that also is paramount. Like you're saying, speckled trout are site-oriented feeders. So, for instance, um, in your fishery of the Noose River, I know that if you all have heavy rains and you have, say, more cloudier water, are, is that a, a large, you know, thing that you're taking into account of locating those fish? Yeah, if if it gets in areas where it gets real muddy, that does not occur all that often here. Sure, sure. Uh, right, and so um, you don't have excessive runoff. Um, right. The main river itself rarely gets enough rain, even in hurricane events, uh, that it gets that muddy. You can get those situations in the Newburn area, and right. that can be a deterrent. Um, there are a handful of creeks, if that, that you'll see um, some muddy conditions in. And so <clears throat> real brown, muddy um, water is not good, one, for clarity, but two, it, you're going to have a drop in salinity and oxygenation in there uh, as well, and, the, and all that can be a deterrent on your, on your fishery. So another question that I wanted to ask you is about people will catch trout in one location one day, and then they'll the next day come back there, and the trout might not be there, and they get frustrated. But this is why I love to ask your opinion, because you tag the fish and because you are so knowledgeable about their movement. How, in your opinion, do these speckled trout move more or less on a day-to-day variation there? I'm going to move by food, and, and, depending, on, and depending on the water temperature and water depth fluctuation uh, here by wind with our wind tides, Right. Areas where there's tide, you're going to have tidal changes that are going to make those fish adjust uh, to to allow them to to eat. Speckled so trout are always going to eat when if they could use the least amount of calories to do so, and so that means not 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 running bait down, not doing something that right. makes like, you know, like feeding more difficult. And yeah. the one thing the one thing that you can you that that I watch a lot of anglers do is they'll go from spot to spot really fast. Right, and yeah. so if you caught fish around a point yesterday, you go back to that point today, and they're not right where you caught them. People have a tendency to want to leave. Right? Why not just work up the bank a little bit? Right? Those, if yeah. a, if a, if a fish shifts a hundred feet, say the uh, they're they're actively feeding on that point, and right. that and the w- wind goes from northeast to west, and the water drops, and the bait shifts off that point. If you don't make that adjustment. You're going to miss all the all the bites you had yesterday, and maybe some more, just right. because you didn't adjust the boat 100 feet. And then, as the trout matures, and you know, just the generalities of how that trout behaves through maturity. So, can you r- real quick just kind of, um, you know, talk about how 
that the trout might behave differently, you know, throughout its growth. Well, you know, of course, the smaller they are, the more, more, more there are in a school, and the more there are in the school, the more competitive they are. Therefore, right. the easier they are to catch. Right. The bigger they get, the less there are in the school, the less competition, the 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 less they feel compelled to eat the first thing that comes by. Yeah. And so that's a that's a big contributing factor in, into catching uh, large fish. Large fish also will take the primary feeding areas and will expend the least amount of energy to eat. And so in our area, uh, you'll find big speckled trout like to be tight to the bank. Um, <clears throat> they like to be on the, the prime areas uh, where they can ambush, and they're always going to be around some food source. And so Absolutely. Um, to find big speckled trout basically requires fishing a lot and weeding through a lot of small fish to be to be productive with it. With the big speckled trout, are you like if I was to ask, hey, let's I want to target one big fish today. Is there anything you would do different in terms of the tackle, like maybe a lighter leader line? Do you feel like those larger fish are much more educated on the line or? Is that something no, they think about? They probably have never seen a lure before in their life. Right. <laughs> right. They just yeah. happened to escape that. They've escaped that that point until they got big enough. Absolutely. And so, you know, if you look at a, at a large female speckled trout, you know, say like a twenty five inch, twenty six inch speckled trout female, she's probably less than five years old. Right. And so, more than likely, she's not encountered an angler before. She certainly probably has encountered many anglers when she was when she was four years old and right. was 21, 22 inches long yeah. because she probably wouldn't have survived long enough. Right. And so they're not, they're not, it's not like a bass in a lake who's repetitive of you see in a, in a, a, a lure. Right. And the only thing that I would say that, that, that uh, if I feel like I'm going to target speckled trout is I want a bait, I want to fish a bait that, that falls slowly to trigger a strike and I'm going to use relatively light tackle to give give myself a little extra distance and right. sensitivity. And so big speckled trout are really good at sucking a bait in, and so seldom do they ever drive through a bait. Right. Big speckled trout bites a lot of times are even more subtle than a little fish. Right. <clears throat> Therefore, the increased sensitivity of the rod, uh, a little bit lighter braid, say a 10-pound braid, are going to be a, a little bit more a little bit more helpful. Absolutely. There's a lot of mysticism involved in speckled trout fishing. Yeah. And so what a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they hear something, they, they, well, this guy did that and this guy, and I got to do this or I, you know, right. you know, it has to be this particular color lure or this, this, this particular, you know, yeah. It, it, at one point I, I had someone tell me that you had to have, um, uh, a mirror lure in the in, in an 18 color, which is a greenback, greenback uh, silver side white belly, but you right. had to take the silver hooks off and put gold hooks on. And my question was, <laughs> why don't you use the one that's got gold sides and not silver sides? Well, that's not going to work, <laughs> right? And so, don't don't overcomplicate it. Right, right. You know, that's the thing that I find most speckled trout fishermen want to overcomplicate it, want to make it difficult. They want to take a lure that's hard to fish or a lure that that uh, speckled trout has a hard time inhaling in their mouth and they want to try to make that the sort of the the magic why they've you know <laughs> that's the magic excuse why they did a lot of things wrong and didn't catch fish today that is very very good uh information and insight there i totally agree uh anyways you guys this is captain gary dubiel spec fever gary thank you so much for taking the time to uh, do this very, very insightful information. And you guys, if y'all ever find yourself wanting to catch big speckled trout or just getting out with someone who is very knowledgeable on this, speckled trout, adult redfish, flounder, or am I leaving anything else out, Gary? Oh, false albacore, striped bass. If it's on the Noose River or, or along the Crystal Coast, uh, you, I, can, I can put you on it. Absolutely. So you guys definitely look him up. Gary Dubiel, Spec Fever. He has a great Instagram as well. Gary, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it a bunch.